The recent and destructive eruption of La Palma in the Canary Islands has likely made a group of residents on another similar island chain a bit uneasy. The Portuguese Azores are also completely volcanic in origin, except unlike La Palma, its eruptions are almost always highly explosive. This fact is best displayed by several large circular depressions in the ground which are known as calderas. These calderas formed when after a large volcanic eruption, a massive swath of ground collapsed downwards like a sinkhole. In the Azores, the most remarkable caldera can be found on the western end of the island of São Miguel. There, you can find the impressive caldera of Sete Cidardes, which is 5 kilometers wide and up to 500 meters deep. Due to the numerous secondary volcanic vents and crater lakes within the caldera, it is truly a sight to behold. However, volcanic eruptions do not always occur within this caldera. For example, two eruptions in both 1110 and 1713 formed a cinder cone and small lava delta on the western shoreline of the island. And even more recent eruptions have occurred completely offshore of the island. The reason why the Sete Cidardes volcano exists is surprisingly still up for debate, but has to do with one or two factors. To the west of the island of São Miguel is the intersection of three tectonic plates. Here, the African Plate, North American Plate, and Eurasian Plate are spreading apart via a mid-ocean ridge in what is known as a triple junction. This interaction has created a series of large fault lines and ridges which go outwards from these plate boundaries in a perpendicular direction. One of these ridges goes to the island of São Miguel, where magma intrudes into the crust through a fissure, eventually erupting via a path of least resistance. Some scientists believe that the rate of volcanic eruptions in the Azores cannot be solely attributed to the triple junction and think that an underlying hotspot is also involved. However, it is unclear if a hotspot truly exists here. The Sete Cidardes volcano began forming around 250,000 years ago when a volume of trachyte composition magma intruded into the crust. This material eventually erupted in an explosive manner, producing a chain of explosion craters which trended in a southeast direction. After several additional eruptions, one of these cones became dominant and started to siphon magma which otherwise would have gone to more distant vents. This began building a broad stratovolcano out of overlapping layers of lava and ash. Sete Cidardes flanks largely had surprisingly gentle slopes owing to the fact that much of its edge was constructed by highly fluid basalt lava flows. By 36,000 years ago, the center of the scenic stratovolcano stood at around 1300 meters in height. However, a large magma chamber had built up underneath the volcano and this eventually led to a highly explosive eruption. This eruption came 35,700 years ago, causing a continuous plume of ash to shoot 30 kilometers into the atmosphere. Part of this eruption column then collapsed downwards, creating pyroclastic flows which traveled up to 15 kilometers distant. Due to the large amount of ejected material totaling on the order of several cubic kilometers of tephra, a large section of the underlying magma chamber had been drained. This caused a significant quantity of overlying rock to collapse downwards, forming a several kilometer wide caldera. This caldera would grow to its modern size through two subsequent similar magnitude eruptions 28,750 and then 15,740 years ago. Afterwards, Sete Cidardes ceased erupting for several thousand years. A new eruptive period commenced around 2050 BC where unusually abundant volumes of pumice ejected an explosive eruption create a 160 meter tall and 1600 meter wide pumice cone. Pumice cones may look like cinder cones, but tend to have slightly more gentle slopes and form through eruptions which are one to two orders of magnitude more explosive. Over the next several thousand years, several subplanian and planian eruptions occurred within the caldera, forming more of these cones which are later be called calderas. Some recent eruptions also occurred to the southeast, where magma interacting with the area's abundant groundwater generated a series of explosion craters in the ground known as Mars. While the last eruption on the island occurred in 1713, this volcano has also produced six other recent eruptions offshore of São Miguel. Two of these formed temporary volcanic islands which soon washed away. The last such eruption occurred in 1880. Thanks for watching. If you would like to request a specific topic, please leave a comment below. Additionally, I would like to thank Ganf Ganf for supporting this channel.